In the 60s, the local psychotherapists would have mental health meetings to, to which they would invite the pastors. The pastors would come and they would talk about how they dealt with problems of living and the psychotherapists let the pastors know that they really were not qualified. And this was one place where the, the referral started in because a pastor, ah, oh, he's not trained in that, how can he deal with this kind of problem? And the therapists talked as if they certainly knew how to do it and they had all of their terminology and their theories and so forth. The sales pitch featured a holistic approach, body, mind, and spirit. Medical doctors attend to the body. Ministers address issues related to the spirit. And of course, psychologists, the domain of the mind. That seemed to make sense to many. Also, in 1952, the American Psychiatric Association produced a book titled Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Commonly called the DSM, it is considered the Bible of mental illness. Originally, it listed 106 mental disorders. And as you use the DSM, you'll find that, uh, you know, all of us fit into one or more of the categories of the DSM, and it just depends on uh, how you use the DSM. But I would say that the DSM is a categorizer of people that began with a small beginning, but it has expanded to literally hundreds of individual designations that would label us as mentally ill, and erroneously so. The DSM list grew to 182 in 1968, then to 265 in 1980, and to 292 in 1987. The count in today's fourth edition DSM manual is 374 mental disorders. They include alleged dysfunctions of the mind such as oppositional defiant disorder, classifying a child or adult who demonstrates hostile behavior toward authority figures as mentally ill, the symptoms include losing one's temper, arguing with adults, deliberately doing things that will annoy other people, and blaming others for his or her own mistakes or misbehavior. Narcissistic personality disorder is a mental illness demonstrated by those who, ironically, nurture their self-esteem beyond the norm set by psychology. You remember what uh, people used to call people were shy. Now it's social anxiety disorder. So that if you're shy and you want to be able to take, have psychotherapy to help you get over your shyness, then, uh, or you want to talk to a therapist because you need someone to talk to because maybe you need a paid friend, you just can have anything, any ordinary thing like shyness and uh, that's turned into one of the categories. In 2004 in Canada, there was a stat Statistics Canada did a survey of the entire Canadian population and determined that two million people are suffering from debilitating shyness, which is uh, now defined as a social anxiety disorder. And claiming in the, the Canadian media has reported that survey uh, to indicate that that means that two million of us in Canada um, are maybe didn't go to school long enough, uh, didn't get good jobs, um, had our marriages fail because of this debilitating problem. I, I end up being speechless as I am right now because we can turn shyness, we can turn um, virtually anything. We can label it. We can transform it from something that might just say, okay, I'm a shy kid, into, no, you're someone with a serious problem and you need help, or your whole life is going to be destroyed. If a person has an antagonistic view of psychological counseling, refusing to subject himself to therapy, he's classified as suffering from non-compliance with treatment disorder. Then there is unspecified mental disorder, which for the purposes of health insurance coverage gives a code for specific mental disorders not included in the DSM-4. Psychology's handling of normal is, uh, is quite bizarre. You know, we have 
we have thermometers that measure you know what the what the temperature is um, and we can define a range of normal and we have an instrument that defines it with psychology normal is basically whatever a psychologist says is normal and abnormal is whatever a psychologist might say is abnormal so the standard doesn't exist other than in the mind of a psychologist, which means that virtually everything can become abnormal. Just how the mental disorders qualified for listing or were later disqualified was not exactly a rigorous scientific process. It's called a vote. The most notorious example of this process had to do with homosexuality. Prior to 1973, it was listed as a mental disorder. However, the National Gay Task Force began pressuring the American Psychiatric Association and was successful in getting the organization to change its view of homosexuality from a deviant abnormal behavior to a sexual preference. The APA subsequently voted to remove homosexuality from its mental disorder list. As the list grew over the years from 103 to 374 mental disorders, so did the number of those who would need help and consequently there would be greater need for professionals to help them. First of all, psychotherapy is not now and can never be a scientific endeavor. An individual is made up of body, mind, and spirit. Of those three components, only the body can be studied by science. This delusion that man is scientifically predictable, that human behavior can be scientifically understood and adjusted, programmed and so forth, uh, that psychology is even scientific. Uh, we need science to help us. Uh, that has been laid to rest long ago. The American Psychological Association, in conjunction with the National Science Foundation, uh, made an extensive study of human behavior. Uh, they engaged 80 eminent scholars uh, to work on this. And over a period of years, uh, they examined this question very carefully. And they came to the conclusion that psychology is not scientific and it cannot be scientific. Dr. Sigmund Koch sums up the panel's findings published in a seven volume series entitled Psychology, a Study of a Science in these words. I think by this time it should be utterly and finally clear that psychology cannot be a coherent science. Psychiatry was never scientific. Psychoanalysis was never scientific. Social work came from a, a basically, let's get out there and help people kind of base. It wasn't scientific. The only little core of science was psychology. And I also find it interesting that the word we use now, you know, I, my profession likes to think we hold the reins on it, but virtually everyone who does counseling or the bizarre therapies of every form will be saying that they're doing psychology. It's all psychology now. And I think we use that word partly because it has that mystique of science about it. Major contributors to the delusion that psychotherapy is scientific are the misnomers of mental health and mental disease. The terms are generally accepted because of Sigmund Freud's background as a physician. That led to the unwarranted assumption that his theories had a medical basis. Dr. Martin Bobgan comments. Well, mental illness is uh, a term that should never be used because when you're dealing with mental, you're dealing with mind. When you're dealing with illness, you're dealing with the body. And people very casually, and medical doctors use the term mental illness, but there is no such thing as a mind that is ill. There's a brain that can be ill, but to put in mental with illness is just uh, an incongruity that shouldn't exist. Mental illness is not a disease. Uh, it, you have illness and you have mind and you don't have a disease of the mind. Counseling is not for professionals only. 